Uh oh. Mom's filming you. Hi, Bubba. <laughs> Are you guys looking in the mirror together? Yeah. We were. Until Are you Mom looking came in over. the mirror together? <laughs> we were. Yeah. Are you locally grown? Hi. Hello. Malachi. Hey friends, it's Jen. Welcome to the Sunshine Farm. Today I want to show you guys a seed haul. All the seeds that I ordered this year, minus a couple that still are on the way. I want to go over how much I spent on seeds and then we'll do a little Q&A. Uh, questions that you asked me on Instagram about seed starting and my seed order and we'll just have a little chat. So joining us today is my sleeping baby, Kai. He may wake up at any point, so we'll try to get this done as fast as I can. Okay, so I ordered from three places this year. The first is my favorite and is a local company to me, and it's called Fruition Seeds. You've probably heard me talk about this before over on Instagram or here on YouTube. The second is Baker Creek Heirloom Seeds. And I like Baker Creek just because of the unique and rare varieties that you can find there. They also just have really amazing photos that they use, which uh, makes it easier to want to buy all the, th all the things. And then my third company that I bought from this year is Johnny Seeds. And Johnny Seeds was actually quite tricky to buy from this year because they closed off almost all of their products from, from home growers. They just had one day open yesterday where home growers could purchase seeds and I knew I wanted to buy my sweet potato, um, my sweet potato, what are they called? Slips. Slips. Thanks. Chris for the win. So my sweet potato slips from there. So I hopped on really early yesterday and was able to order my sweet potato slips and a couple different packets of seeds as well as asparagus crowns. I really like Johnny seeds. For things that are hard to grow for me because the hybrid vigor that they have with their seeds makes it just a little bit easier to grow some of those particularly challenging crops so let me show you what we have here and this is not all of the seeds that I'll be growing I have a whole lot of seeds already these are just things that I wanted more variety of or seeds I ran out of and I wanted to grow more of that crop so let's start with flowers one is yarrow. I got a, a kind of cosmos and holy basil, or also also called Tulsi. I got a variety called root. I do not know how to pronounce this. Rudbeckia. It's really beautiful. I also got a different color of yarrow, a yellow yarrow. I really love yarrow. It's a perennial. These cosmos. They're an apricot lemonade cosmos. Really beautiful and a choice mix of like a large head zinnia. Okay, moving on to peppers. That's probably, I got a lot of peppers and most of them I got from Baker Creek because they had a, a, quite a large variety. Um, jalapenos and habanero. I have never had success starting habaneros and I'm not sure why, so I'm gonna give it another try. And then from Baker Creek, I got something called the Sugar Rush Peach, is a hot pepper. And then the rest are sweet peppers. Golden Honey Sweet Peppers, really beautiful. Um, chocolate Beauty, so a chocolate bell. And then the rest are, are bells, I believe. So California Wonder, it's a favorite of mine. I just ran out of seeds. This is one I've seen recommended by others called Edgevarsky. Um, Kind of a funny shape, but supposed to be really productive and thick walled. An orange bell pepper. I haven't grown orange before. And then this one I really love growing, King of the North red bell pepper. It's great if you live in the North like we do. My favorite tomatoes are the Italian paste tomato. They're super productive, really early, and nice big fruits that work well for sandwiches, um, soups, sauces, paste, all the things. So I really love that variety. And then I also got um, Siger tomatoes from Fruition Seeds and more of my favorite honey um, 
Cherry. More my favorite cherry tomatoes. It's funny. I forgot the word, but right on top of the seed packet it says cherry tomato. Mom brain. So honey drop. This is our favorite cherry tomato. Super sweet. Uh, better than sun gold. Really delicious. And then a couple of tomatoes from Baker Creek. Um, I got the Blue Beauty tomato, which I've grown before, and it's just really beautiful. I wanted some beauty in the garden. And a tomato called Dad's Sunset. Um, and I also got free seeds for something called White Tome Song, which is, looks like a very light, light yellow tomato. I also got some ground cherry seeds because I ran out um, pineapple ground cherry and um, a ground cherry from Baker Creek. This one is the common, a common type. So um, pineapple should be a little bit more tart and this is probably a little bit less tart, a little bit more sweet. I got one variety of okra, a pink okra called Okinawa Pink. I just thought this was really beautiful and was excited to see how it would look in the garden. Okra doesn't do very well for us, but we do get a number of um, fruits off the plant. Uh, three, di four different varieties of watermelon. I got three from Fruition Seeds. Honey Island, which is a yellow watermelon. August Ambrosia, a large red. Hi, puppy. And then Sugar Baby, which is the small red fruits. And out of Baker Creek, I got Moon and Stars Watermelon, which I have grown before, but I did not grow last season. I really loved it the first year I grew it, so I wanted to grow it again. Okay, let's talk about squash and cucumbers. Are you gonna wake up? Oh, you are. You are. Are you not happy to be waking up? Shh, here you go. Okay, so let's talk about cucumbers. I just got two varieties because I already have plenty more. Um, bush pickle and um, Mexican sour gherkins. These are cucamelons. I got a couple varieties of summer squash. One from Fruition Seeds called Summer Squash Success PM. So this one is powdery mildew resistant, which is great because we get powdery mildew. And the other one is from Baker Creek. And then I also got two different winter squash from Fruition Seeds, Honey Nut, which I grow every year and love, and um, Delicata winter squash. So I'm excited to try Delicata. I've never grown it before. And then from Baker Creek, I got a butternut squash, um, a zucchini, it's just a zucchini variety and heirloom. Um, Jarredale pumpkins, which are my favorite pumpkins to grow. I'm just low on seeds. And New England sugar pie pumpkins, which I'm also low on seeds for and really love to grow. Okay, onions. I really love growing onions. They're really tricky. I'm gonna start them this weekend. And I wanted to get a little bit more this year. So I purchased three varieties. The first variety is Yellow Onion New York Early by Fruition Seeds. So this one's adapted for New York, which is awesome. Um, I got a red onion seed, uh, Rosa de, de Milano. I grew both of these last year and had like moderate success. I still have yet to have an onion year where the onions are just like huge and beautiful. I'm hoping this is the year, but we'll just have to see how it goes. And then I got yellow sweet Spanish. I love Spanish onions, so I got those from Baker Creek. I've never grown those before. Finally, I bought some beans. So we end up not eating a whole lot of green beans, but I do love the way pole beans look in the garden. So I decided to get some pole bean varieties just for growing on trellises. And one thing we really do love is fava beans. So I'm going to grow those again this year. I'll probably plant them as soon as the ground um, is plantable since they are a cold, hardy crop. So for pole beans from Fruition Seeds, I got um, Scarlet Emperor pole beans. These are the ones that have the beautiful red flowers. And Triumpho Violetto pole snap beans. These are purple green beans, so I guess purple beans. And I really like the flavor of these. 
And at a bigger creek, I got two packets of fava beans. So Broad Windsor is the variety. And then I bought a runner bean called Sunset that I just thought was really beautiful and wanted to give it a try. So that is my seed haul. I don't know how many seeds I got, but let me calculate how much I spent on them. I spent $80 on fruition seeds. I had a $50 gift card that I got for Christmas. Um, so $80 there. I spent $76 on Baker Creek seeds. So 80 plus 76 is 156. And let's check out how much I spent at Johnny's and what I got. So for Johnny's seeds, I got three different varieties of sweet potato slips, a total of 75 slips, which is a lot. Um, I got 25 units of asparagus crowns. I bought, um, and I bought two packets of seeds. So in total, um, for Johnny seeds, I spent $167 because the sweet potatoes was about $90 and the asparagus crowns were about, they were about $43. So I spent $323 on seeds and sweet potato slips and asparagus crowns which seems like a lot, but hopefully we'll grow, we'll, we will likely grow all of our own sweet potatoes, all of our own onions, all of our own tomato products and pepper products and all the other things. So we'll save, we'll save more than, much more than that. We'll save hundreds and hundreds of dollars through the summer and in the winter from things we won't have to buy at the store. So let's go into the Q and A part. Okay. So the first question that I received was, do you try to get a few seeds each year that you haven't ever grown before? And the answer is yes. Uh, this year I ordered, hi, you're so funny. This year I ordered some new flowers that I haven't grown before, definitely some new peppers, a couple new tomatoes, and the pink okra, which will be fun. So yes, also the delicata squash. Uh, where do you order your seeds from? From More Roots Homestead. We order most of our seeds from Fruition Seeds, and I would say the second most common is Baker Creek and uh, also from Johnny's. But I also like to get seeds from some other regionally um, closer places. I'm trying to think of the names. One's in Vermont. Oh, High Mowing is another place that I like to buy seeds close to us. Uh, I actually just posted a blog post that has a complete list of companies that sell heirloom seeds across the entire country organized by state and in some states by the region of the state. So go ahead and check that out on the blog um, sunshinefarmny.com if you're looking for seed companies close to you. Tips for starting a first ever garden plan. <laughs> Little nuggets making noises. Hi, you keep falling asleep and waking up. Yeah, you do. Hmm, starting a first ever garden plan. I would say start small, keep it simple, have things that you really enjoy eating, um, have some things that you know grow really well in your region, and then have a few things that are just fun, that you're excited about and you wanna give a try. Someone said, if, you, if two seed companies have the same variety, how do you choose which company? Um, and then they put a question about, is it based on money? I never base seed orders on how expensive the seeds are because oftentimes you're getting what you pay for. So if it's a dollar versus $4, um, that's probably related to the kinds of practices that the farm is using to grow the seeds. I, I'm willing to spend more money on seeds to support a smaller company that has really uh, wonderful practices and organic practices. I choose organic companies whenever possible. If it's the same variety and two places are selling it, I'll go with the more local company um, and a company that's organic versus non-organic. How do you plan what to plant when? I find seed package instructions so confusing. Onions take a really long time to start, so I start those first. I'm starting them this weekend. 
um, so mid-February, even though the seed packet says early March, in my experience, I need longer to get them going. So I'm gonna start them earlier. With peppers, seed packets will say like eight weeks before your uh, planting date, but in my experience, they take a long time, so I start them earlier. So I'm probably gonna start them in late February, especially hot peppers. Um, so a lot of it is learning by doing, and then I will also start in February cold hardy crops like broccoli, cauliflower, Brussels sprouts, and kale and cabbage. So I'll start those things because I can plant those in April, so I'll start them two months before I'm planting them. I like to have six to eight weeks of head time with starts before I plant them in the ground. That's kind of how I go, depending on when they're gonna be planted. I'll start them six to eight weeks before that. Somebody asked, do I always order seeds or do you ever use seeds from your own produce? I typically order seeds because I don't have a system set up yet to be able to save seeds in a way where they're not um, cross-pollinated. And I also haven't had a garden that has been so incredibly vigorous and productive to the point where I want to save those seeds. There have been a, a few crops that have been really impressive, like my, pe my peppers last year were really great. But my garden's still young. It's only the, f this garden will be in its third year um, this season because we started it, the, the no-till section we started two years ago. So it'll be in its third year and it's just gonna keep getting better. So I'm gonna wait until it's like really successful before I save seeds. Um, somebody asked what seeds you recommend for beginners. I would say start with things like peppers, tomatoes, um, beans, cucumbers, watermelon, things like that. Um, the trickier things in my experience are broccoli, cauliflower, Brussels sprouts, onions. Those are the trickiest. And then hot peppers can be trickier too because uh, sometimes they just take a long time to grow and they can be hard to start. So for starting indoors, I think one of the easy th easiest things to start is tomatoes in my experience. And I would also say for a beginner, choose things that you can just direct sow in the ground, like beans, uh, like watermelon, like summer squash, winter squash, all those things you can just plant right in the ground. Favorite must grow plants. I love growing ground cherries. I love growing flowers. I love growing winter squash just because of the the way they um, vine out. I think they're really fun, but they're really hard because of all the pest issues that we have here. Pole beans are really fun. They don't have as many pest issues and they're really beautiful. Okay, next question. How to have self-restraint and not buy everything? I would say make a list ahead of time of the things you need, which um, I did right before I went and placed the order of all the things I didn't have. And so I ordered those things. And then I ordered a couple new fun things, but I really didn't order a whole lot of new things because I didn't want to go overboard. I can only fit so much in our garden and I only have so much time. So I really like to grow the things that I've already known, <laughs> I've already grown and loved. So that's how I do it. I just make a list of all the things I need I order those things and I have a couple extra fun things that I order. Someone asked if I try new ones to grow. I already answered that, but they asked any that you definitely won't grow. If I grow something and I don't like it, I don't grow it again. So there have been some tomatoes that I've grown. Um, I grow, I've grown green zebra tomatoes every single year and then I realize I don't really like eating them anymore. I used to, but I just like uh, red, red and orange and yellow tomatoes better than green tomatoes. So I'm just not going to grow them this year because they just end up staying on the plants and falling off and rotting. And so I don't want to waste garden space or um, neglect plants. And the last question is, do you have resources for where to get seeds for other regions? And they said they're from Colorado. And yes, I wrote the blog post and it has lots and lots and lots of seed companies all over the country all different states. There's a few in Colorado even. So definitely check that out on the blog, which is sunshinefarmny.com. And it's the first blog post there. I also wrote a blog post on this exact topic. Seven tips for ordering seeds to start your dream garden. He's back. Hello. Can you go away, please? 
<laughs> the first tip on the blog post about tips for ordering seeds is order locally if at all possible. And to order locally, you can check out the other blog post on the heirloom seed company list. So definitely head over to the blog for some tips, for seed company ideas, all of those things, and hopefully you'll get some questions answered. Well, that's all for now, friends. Thanks for joining me for this little seed haul and Q&A. I hope you enjoyed meeting this little buddy too. He slept through the whole thing. What a good little nugget. And I'm excited to get these seeds started. I'm going to start my onions this weekend and I will record that process and share it with you guys very, very soon. So see you soon. Bye friends.